Hi friends, I'm Gary West, and whether you find Augustine's Pizza at your local grocery store or at their restaurant in Newcastle, the folks at Augustine's Pizza hope that their pizza is always your first choice for any and all occasions. It could be you. Fly around like the winter snow. Bring you to NCTV45. Hello, welcome to Focus NC on NCTV45. This is host Matthew Geiger from the Washington Outsider, WashingtonOutsider.org. Please visit us to uh, learn the latest on uh, national and international events that affect um, the community and everyone's lives. Well, today I, I wanted to sp spend a little time on Focus NC. As you can tell, I'm soloing it right now, no guests. Um, today I wanted to kind of talk about some of the things going on. Um, if you notice, on the state level, we're in another situation where there's a budget conflict. Um, we're also inside Newcastle. In a, you know, we've noticed for years the downtown's had a lot of struggling problems. We've talked about this. We're not gonna, we're not gonna just avoid. It. We're not gonna sit there and avoid it and pretend like it doesn't exist. We've had a lot of problems. There's been a lot of community problems too, divisions. Well, and you look at um, the Hoyt, or you know, it, it's one of those uh, bright spots in the community. But um, we look at other um, kind of benchmark. Uh, you know, institutions in this community like uh, Jamison Hospital. Um, it's been struggling financially. We know it, uh, UPMC was in, supposed to be purchasing it, but that's been put on delayed for various reasons. Um, we've also know the local government struggling with a huge debt burden and again, a, a, a weak tax base. It ha you know, so it's it's not like it can go raise taxes, and of course, um, economically, the city has a lot of empty space and businesses that aren't doing as well as they really need to be doing. Um, we've also um, seen a lot of flooding, a lot of issues with the uh, watershed. We know, of course, through the Blueprint uh, Communities Initiative, they may be able. Um, qualify for some funds, funds through HUD that can help take care of that. And hopefully that won't be wasted on other priorities that exist in this town. There's a lot of reasons it's come to this. And we're starting to see that, you know, Newcastle struggled for decades. But now we're really starting to see these big institutions, this, the titanic institutions, starting to fail. And one of the issues we've really gotten stuck in the community is, is some real divisions, and we've also seen, what we've kind of seen is the community's really been stuck in a rut. And you know, this doesn't just mean the people who are on government subsidies, assistant programs, it's, it means the leadership as well, the more affluent individuals of the community. And of course, you know, one of the things we've really noticed about government is that for decades, people have asked government to do more, to do, help people more. And the government has. It's stepped up with, uh, you know, public assistance programs and whatnot. But at the same time, as that's happened, we've started to see a real decline in more community support from the affluent, more community involvement from just about everyone. And a lot, and we've, I've 
been kind of listening to this conversation of conservatives and they blame government intervention but you know that's an ex you know it's really an excuse it's really you know you can't rel we've come to from the people on public assistance to the affluent community leaders to rely on government to do everything for us but when you don't have ownership in your own community you can't have a successful community when you don't have people supporting their community, building their community, you cannot have a successful community. You cannot have, and if you can't have a successful community, you can't have a successful economy. And of course, a successful economy and community relies on that society serving the interests, the needs and wants of all those involved, not just the affluent, and not just the, you know, the majority of people. It has to provide for everyone's needs. And so, you know, this raises a big question. What does ownership in Newcastle actually mean? I mean, there's, certain, there's people who own a lot of businesses in Newcastle, and they have plans for those businesses. There's people who own a lot of property here. But ownership isn't just about owning a piece of property. It's about having a stake in your community. And that's from the you know the lowliest of people to the highest to the most affluent people. Everyone has a stake in Newcastle if they step up and take ownership. And so right now we're going to hear from some of our local sponsors that are you know trying that are part of the community, trying to help make the community better, and you know looking to support local jobs. And you know they're a great place to uh, spend local dollars. Well, um, and when we get back, we're going to talk about little what does ownership actually mean. Look what you'll find at Paul D. Weller Hardware. Lawn and garden supplies, plumbing and electrical supplies, do-it-yourself items, pipe bending, window screen, and key making services, tools of all kinds, paint, fans, ladders, rodent traps, bug spray, and that's just some of what you'll be able to purchase at Paul D. Weller Hardware at 207 North Liberty Street in the Mahoningtown section of Newcastle. Call 724-652-1531. The Crane Room is a restaurant. The Crane Room is a bar. The Crane Room is a banquet facility. The restaurant will please you time after time with their diverse menu. Ask about their daily specials. See the menu at craneroom.com. The bar gives you an abundance of choices with 35 beers on tap and always changing. Their banquet services are always to perfection. The Crane Room located at 3009 Wilmington Road in Ashanic Township. Call 724-656-1553. Joshua Sun Rehabilitation Center. From the moment you arrive, you know that you're in the right place. Dr. John Wrightson listens first. He pays attention to detail and then makes the determination. Joshua Sun Rehabilitation. We make the pain go away. Welcome back to Focus NC on NCTV 45. This is host Matthew Geiger from the Washington Outsider, WashingtonOutsider.org. Please visit us for our latest take on the news of the day. Uh, today we're talking about ownership, ownership in Newcastle. And we're not just talking about ownership as in I own a bunch of buildings that are falling apart and I, I hope the city can take them over or I hope some business will come in or you know I run a successful business or I rent to successful business owners so I'm doing my part it's about taking ownership in the community the sense of community and that's something everyone needs to do it's not enough just to be the guy on the top of the hill and you know figuratively and literally in Newcastle um, it's you have to be part of it you can't just rule over people that's not how communities work that's no, they can't function you have to people have to be able to come through. Sure, some people have more financial assets, some people have more property, but you know what? The ownership's the same. And then there's people who have nothing, who do rely on government support. But those people, that reliance is never gonna be broken unless our community takes ownership and revives the community. You know, and we've of course seen things are getting worse and some of these, you know, 
these titanic institutions that have really kept the community afloat are starting struggling from state sponsors to our local government through uh, Jamison Hospital. And even as far out to Westminster, they've been struggling with uh, um, attracting students in recent years. We've, we've seen their uh, numbers diminishing. And, you know, these are things that, you know, they may, not everyone works for these institutions, but they do provide this, uh, much of the economy in the, in the area. So when we talk about ownership, you know, it means helping the whole community successful, helping our neighbors. And, you know, not, and when our neighbors need help being successful, it means stepping out and helping them succeed. And not just our neighbors across the street, the neighbors in all of Newcastle, whether they're poor, rich, black, white, Italian, German, it means overcoming those divisions and helping them succeed. Well, what does ownership mean? Well, first off, ownership starts with attitude. When you always, you know, we, we have a situation where in the country and locally, regionally, we like to focus on problems. Go read a newspaper, go online, read your news. You know, most newscasts, they start off by saying, hey, there's a problem. Someone got killed. Someone robbed this place. You know, the government's doing this stupid thing. Why are they doing this? Why aren't they doing this? Well, they're doing it now. Why are they doing it? You know, there's a constant focus on the problem, the negativity, the, what's wrong. You know, at NCTV 45, we try to be a constructive force in the community. We focus on the positive, but we f confront the negative in a constructive manner. And that's what needs to happen. You know, you know, it means building a job. It means building, we're building a business. We're working to help other businesses um, improve their business, and we're also helping to really shine a light on the problems. Um, we've dealt with issues. Um, our producer, Angelo, he's um, noticed the problem of heavy construction going down the street, damaging the street. He raised it with city council. They've uh, pushed it through. We're seeing other developments on certain buildings that have been decaying. Um, ones that have had to be removed, we're pushing forward on that. On ones that we want, we see need preserved, we're helping preserve those. We're trying to have a constructive impact on the community. We're trying to, you know, talk to people about things. And that's what it is, is when you have that attitude. You know, it's, it's not just a focus on the problem. Now, the thing about focusing on the problem is you can't ignore it. That's a big pro That's been a big problem in any community that's hurting. We, you tend to avoid things that are harmful that you don't want to deal with. That you know everything's fine. It's not, you know. And of course, the first step in making excuses is you know focusing on the problem. But the first step in uh, solving problems really starts with identifying the problem. You have to identify it. And then you have to identify there is a problem. And that's a pretty obvious statement. I mean, you know, and of course, when you see on the news they're saying there's a problem, well, duh, we all know that. But the second, so that brings the second part. You have to identify exactly what the problem is. And that's, you know, you, you have a building and you call in a structural, you can see all the, 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 the um, outsides falling off. Well, you got to construct, you, that's, then you go and hire a structural engineer or an architect and they tell you exactly what's, why it's doing it. That's what needs. That's the second part. And then you've got to find a solution, and you've got to test it, and you've got to do reassess, 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 go through that whole problem, problem, problem. That's what has to be done. And that's where another, the second part of ownership comes in, and that's leadership. You know, what is the solution? Helping find the solution. What is one positive thing you've done to help improve someone's life, the community? Have you gone down and eating at a local restaurant, you know, it's something as simple as and self-serving as that. Have you gone down to Little Johnny's and had a, sl a couple slices of pizza? The unique uh, pierogi pizza with bacon, that's, you know, one of the best down there, their veggie pizza. You know, there aren't very many businesses in town, but you know what, they're pretty good what they do have. And then there's, of course, you know, have you done something to clean up? Have you volunteered for new visions? Um, help beautify the community? Have you offered to say, hey, I have a great project. How can we, you know, I think this would help improve the community. Have you talked to business, have you talked to government, gone in? You know, that's one of the things. We have an, there's an election coming up. Um, people, there's, right now, the, the mayor's the only candidate, but you know what? 
elections aren't just about electing a person, they're also about putting issues on the table. It's all, you know, it's about voicing your opinion, and that's what people need. That means, and that takes on long to the third part of ownership, and that's responsibility. You know, actually working towards the solution, not just saying there's a problem, here's an idea to solve it. How can we make that solution implement it? How can we work towards it? How can we get it? Now, one of the serious issues that you know, Newcastle's had, because I think there's a lot of solutions there, and there's a lot of people that love this community. There's counterproductive elements within the community, and that gets tiring, and that kind of leads to people um, apathy. And that's, that's maybe one of the ways we have an issue in Newcastle, is a, a lot of apathy towards solving the problems. And, you know, that means there's a follow-through. There's a lack of enforcement. You know, it's like City Council can make a, um, uh, a, a statute, put through something. No, this, you're not going to do this, but you're not going to litter, okay? But if no one comes along when you litter and says you're fine, it, it, it doesn't mean anything. It, it's lip service. It's superficial. And that's a, big, that's a big issue, is that when you do superficial gestures, but never have that follow through, it never happens. And you know, of course, you know, people want their streets clean, but then they get a fine and they complain and they go get, get it removed. It does no any good. And that's a lot of the issues in Newcastle is the follow through. And we need to see that. And so that's what ownership means. You know, um, questioning how can you be a leader today by just doing something positive, constructive? It means you know, it means having the right attitude. You know, you can't just have a negative attitude. There are people you can do everything in the day right, and they will still have a negative attitude. It's about, so it, it is about attitude. It's also about leadership, taking leadership. It's all about, and leadership taking responsibility. What are we working to solve the problem? And it's about accountability, making sure when someone takes on a leadership role, they actually accomplish what they set out to do. And that means follow through and reinforcement of, you know, when we decide to make a rule, we make a rule and we enforce it. And there's consequences. And we don't whine and complain when we get hit by the consequences. And it means bringing the community, it doesn't mean just the affluent doing this or the, you know, person who's looking involved. It means everyone doing it. And if you want to be in a position of power, you know, you need to take up those reins and you need to let other people do it when it's necessary. Right now, we're going to hear about from some of our local sponsors who are helping um, support the community in our efforts and, you know, just the efforts of Newcastle to become a better place. Um, and when we get back, we're going to kind of wrap up and talk a little bit about, you know, some, uh, some more of this idea of ownership in Newcastle. Tuscany Square Restaurant, 3470 Wilmington Road, where old world charm meets the modern conveniences of today. Spacious seating and amenities await. Fresh ingredients that make that just right pizza or entree. It's Tuscany Square for your next event. Stop and see us or give us a call at 724-654-0365. The Cedars is a great restaurant with outstanding Mediterranean food. The Cedars takeout menu is second to none, featuring pizza, stromboli, hoagies, their famous lamb on the rod, and so much more. So when you're hungry and you want that Newcastle taste, make it Cedars. Now with two locations in Newcastle, 827 Addis Street on the east side and 1101 Highland Avenue. Call Cedars East, 724-658-9260 or Cedars North, 724-652-7657. If you're craving hot dogs and more, and you're in the area, then look no farther than Coney Island, downtown Newcastle on Kennedy Square. Welcome back to Focus NC on NCTV 45. This is host Matthew Geiger from the Washington Outsider. Um, visit us at WashingtonOutsider.org for um, our latest take on the news. Well, today we've been talking about ownership in Newcastle, and obviously I, I didn't have a guest here because I... I thought it was really necessary to sit down and have a real frank discussion and cover some some uh, important topics right now. And we've talked about ownership reflecting attitude. You have to have a positive, constructive attitude. And that's hard to have when you're facing a dire situation. 
and you're just facing, you know, something you've been struggling with for decades. And that's that's what Newcastle, you know, had, struggles with. It does struggle with apathy, and it's understandable why it struggles with apathy. And a leadership, of course, you need leadership for ownership. You know, people need to take on leadership, and you need to let other people take the reins when you're incapable of being providing that leadership and it's it's not just about one person being in charge or one group of people it's about everyone and of course responsibility and a responsibility means you're working to solve the problems you're doing the things that are needed to get the problem solved and of course accountability and that means when the problem actually solves how do we when we don't solve a problem we need to go back and reassess how what is a good better solution what options do we have? And do we need a different leadership? And that's all that needs to, be, that needs to happen throughout the other community. And there needs to be follow through. People need to not just give lip service, be superficial and so on. And so we've, you know, that's, you know, we gotta move beyond just the, um, just the, the solution finding. We need to actually think about a community. And one thing that brings community together, and maybe that, transcends is, is we see on the national stage um, the Cuban Missile Crisis are, has been resolved finally after you know it's it's been only it only took them 50 some years um, but we also talk about the Iranian nuclear deal and a, a lot of conversation you'll see coming up is Obama's legacy the president's legacy and every president they talk about a legacy legacy is about more than yourself you know for most people their legacy is their children or their work, their life's work. And in Newcastle, the legacy, we haven't had a very good, we've had a lot of legacies, people with strong, powerful legacies that have really impacted the world. Um, we've had very successful businesses um, all over. We've had very successful people here. But, you know, we have, the community as a whole, it's, it doesn't have the legacy it deserves. And people need to, when they say Newcastle, that should be part of their legacy. And that's what people need to start seeing when they take on leadership roles in this community. What is the legacy of my leadership in here? What is the legacy of being a member of this community? And um, Angelo, our producer here, he, he wanted us to, uh, kind of uh, look at someone named uh, Lou Holtz. Now, for you sports fans, you know him as the Notre Dame head coach um, for years, a very successful man at his uh, endeavors. But he said, um, he, he kind of lived by the philosophy that life should be about trust, commitment, and love. Now, trust, you know, there's a lot of trust issues in Newcastle. There's, the community's been through a lot. There's a lot of divisions. And we've talked about before how when there's not trust, and we've talked about this on the Washington Outsider, a lack of trust makes people avoid working together. It makes it very difficult to address problems. It makes it very trust difficult to find solutions. It makes it very difficult for people to be willing to support their community to make an effort in the community. They feel like they'll be betrayed. They feel scared to do anything, paralyzed. The, you know, there's a pr paralysis. So we need to work on trust building. And then there's an issue of commitment. And of course that uh, affects trust as well. And you know, when we talk about trust, it's also about the community leaders trusting that their citizens are also looking out for their interests. And when they see the government, they see it as a constructive force, and when the government has some ideas, that they can share it with the people and help improve those ideas, that it's not just about yelling at them. But when we talk about commitment, we talk about um, what, are you, what are you really committed to? Are you committed to improving the community, or are you committed to making yourself look like a, a socially responsible person? a socially uh, a community, a good community member, a good citizen, uh, a good leader, a good public figure? Or are you, are you committed to the, yourself or are you committed to the community? And if you're committed to the community, are you committed to problem solving? I mean, we can all come up with an idea, but unless we're committed to it, and when we mean commitment, I mean actually working towards it, 
it doesn't matter. It will never succeed. You have to be committed to the solution. And of course, when you talk about love, there's a lot of people. The, when I first started doing the Focus NCs, I came in here and asked people, do you care about the community? Do you care about the people? And everyone thought about it and answered yes. Well, sometimes that can be a bit of a challenge, really meaning that, really reflecting on what does that mean. It doesn't mean you can't criticize things. It doesn't mean you can't look at the problems. It doesn't mean you avoid issues. It doesn't mean you say everyone's the best person in the world. It's about it's about saying you love the community and you love the world. You do this to make it better. You don't care about what this person is, how they're going to, you know, you're not concerned with what the person's going to do with your efforts, what they're going to do. You do this, you're motivated by the need, your love for the community, your love for people to make the community better. And so, you know, as Lou Holtz put it, trust, commitment, and love are the key to success. And you have to love the community, you have to love the people, you have to be committed to them, and you have to let them trust you, and you have to help them trust you. And that's what needs needs. And that's from the lowliest person on the street, you know, just struggling to make it through every day, to the most affluent members of our community. We need greater ownership in Newcastle. We also need, we need to get, st we've kind of gotten in this routine. We've gotten stuck in a routine of, of, of being in a, of a rut, the tradition of being in a rut, if you will. We need to, get out of that rut. You know, traditions fine, routines great, and it's important, but we need more than, but not when it's a, a negative, a harmful rut, not when it's destructive, not when your your community's falling apart. Well, I don't want to, you know, you got to clean, you got to, instead of walking by oh, out your house every day, sometimes you got to stop and paint it, trim the weeds on the side of your building, especially if you own or own one. You know, you got to clean your street up. You got to break your daily. You got to make that part of the routine, the constructive stuff that helps the place get better. In closing, you know, Angelo wanted me to just say one thing. You know, we we th envision the idea of storming the castle. Well, you're in the castle right now, but you know, you've lo a lot of the people. We've lost control of the castle. The con we've just kind of taken comfort in being in the castle. Well, he wants you to retake the castle. We want you to retake the castle. And that's what ownership in Newcastle means. Retaking the castle, making it your own. Showing the right attitude, responsibility, leadership, and commitment, and accountability. These are all things you need, and you need to follow through on. So as we move forward, and we're going to be dealing with a lot of issues in Newcastle over the coming months, maybe more than we're even used to, and that can be very frightening. But we can come together if we take ownership in this community and help make it better. Well, thank you for joining me on Focus NC on NCTV 45. This has been host Matthew Geiger from the Washington Outsider. Uh, don't forget to visit us um, for our, uh, our take on the news of the day. And uh, we hope you have a pleasant week and enjoy the nice warm summer. Hopefully the rain won't hit you too hard. Mary's Middle Eastern Restaurant. Yes, fine Middle Eastern food where elegance and charm meet old world goodness. Great lamb, chicken, and so much more. Mary's, located on Long Avenue in Newcastle. Call 724-652-2447. Daimio and Olson Law Group, where every client matters. Serving Newcastle, Elwood City, and Youngstown. Daimio and Olson handles criminal law, bankruptcy, civil matters, workers' compensation, personal injury, medical malpractice, divorce, wills, real estate, and many more legal issues. Call any one of their offices in Newcastle, Elwood City, or Youngstown with these phone numbers. Open Monday through Friday, 9 to 5. Daimio and Olson Law Group, where every client matters. Come dine with us, come dine, come dine today. If you could use some real good food, there's a place not far away. If you could use a drink or two, or a place to go and play, come to Gallo's.
Italian Villa today. Bring in the NCTV 45.